I went away from it, but he didn't want to admit it because he had written this very beautiful book, mm -hmm. which is still a very beautiful book, and even because I don't think it's the right way to do abstract quantum mechanics, it, you learn a lot from it, like methodologically, because it starts in physics from you start physics from from operational principles, from mm -hmm. operational, yeah. What does it mean? I mean, it's it's it's, 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 it's something like it's like a, it's like a, a deformed implication. It's like it's so, it's, 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 <laughs> so it's something which was, which which they want to be to be an implication, but it's not that. So instead of this, it's like a, an ugly thing. But it's sort of implied by the in the definition. It's, it's it's implicitly this is an adjunction. It's implicitly defined within this adjunction. So the junction, if you got one side and the other one is determined for a partial order. Yeah. So you've got the projectors here, a projector on a subspace B. Yeah. And if you take the right adjoint to that, then this is this. Sasaki book. Sasaki book. It's like quantum implication operation. You can you can you can write it down algebraically like uh, wait the, the the projector you can always write down as so projector on A is how is it again? Um, it's A meet. Uh, here to join A orthogonal. I think that's it. Yeah. And then the other one you, is, is just you have to exchange meets and joins. I think uh, something like that. I'm not sure, but it's something like that. Mm -hmm. Might be that the negation goes. I don't remember it clearly, but it's, I haven't been doing this stuff for ages. And it's not not intuitive, so you don't remember it. No. I don't remember it, so like, because it's, it's, it's really not intuitive, and I don't want to keep it on the blackboard. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> can I say that if you do go to a non commutative hating yeah, algebra, right. right. if you go to a non commutative hating algebra, you will not have this so George, 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 it's uh, You mean if you go to a do, to a quantile? Well, beyond that, I, I, will, I will do it in my work, I will, I will have a non commutative version of hating algebra, and then you don't have this equivalence anymore because of self intersections. Yeah. So there's a, there's a much better version if you go to the non commutative case, I think. There is, you know, there, there, is, there is some content here to this. this I think it's actually starting to understand this stuff which made me go to Kennedy because there is, a, there is something about, uh, there is an adjoint semantic. This is going yeah. forward in time. It means like a projector tells you for, if we have this here, then it's very much in the process theory. If you start here, then a projector tells you what's going to happen later. Is this, is this, 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 this right. twiddle thing gives you like weakest preconditions. Yeah. This is very closely related, isn't yes. it, to this Dynamic notion logic. of so-called residuated mappings. Yes, yes. yes. It, this, uh, this residuated mappings. So this is, very, this is something which people in computer science have been using a long time. To, but it's like which property guarantee that after the process something would be true. Yeah. So it's sort of dynamic logic. So there is something to it here. But if you really start to understand it and you want to sort of see it within the whole picture of quantum mechanical quantum mechanics life, the universe of any and, and, and everything, then you see that that the le what, what is really right about this picture is the adjunction, but not the underlying order theory. So you want to abstract the adjunction. And that's actually what I'm going to present today is so, as this implicit this adjunction as le at the level of abstraction, without having to deal with the order structure underlying. It's like the adjunction which is cru crucial, not, not the order structure. The adjunction is, is the dynamic thing, which people were talking about yesterday. Like the process, the, the adjunction is a structure on the processes. The adjunction is a, is a logical structure on processes. So that's the important part we have to pick out from this. Um, so what is the defect of this block of annoying stuff? You have no logic, you have no simplification, you have no real application, and you have no comprehensive <laughs> calculus. <laughs> Great. <laughs> In particular, you don't even mention that, but if you go to, to talk, if you go to this quantum logic, they, they now called IQSA, International Quantum Structure Association meetings, then you will see that they all come up, oh, we've got some new abstract theory, and we almost have something like a tensor product theory, only it has nothing to do with the Hilbert space tensor product. So they, after 70 years, are still looking for natural metrics for compoundments. Because, because if you look at these lattice theoretic <coughs> models, then the only way to get a tensor product out of it is by assuming you're working on the logic of uh, lattice of closed subspaces of a Hilbert space. There is no level of axiomatics or conceptualization or abstraction um, at which you can retain the behavioral properties of the Hilbert space tensor product. They completely vanish, and they've been doing this for 80 years and it doesn't work. There is no abstract counterpart to describing compound quantum systems. And 
more and more these days in like the new developments and understanding the Hilbert space formalism and what its capabilities are, it's clear that everything comes from the tensor product. That's the thing you want to understand. And what actually these people are trying to understand is superposition. But I claim that superposition is just an implicit consequence of the tensor product behavior. Just an implicit sort of feature. While, well, for this lattice theoretic thing was all about. So this is the this is actually this is the only example this is the only example you need lattice theoretically to understand what they're actually trying to do. If you take join of two things and then there can be a third in the middle, which is the superposition. That's the only essence of the lattice theoretic approach to capture this. So. Can, can I just say something very quickly on a historical yes, sure. point? Well, which is that this is exactly what Jerry Kacharian was trying to do in the last work that he did before he sadly went out of mathematics altogether. And this was the point which he hammered and which Bill Orvier encouraged him greatly. To, to, he published one paper in this in the Journal of Pure Applied Algebra about 1983 uh, to find where the correct junction was. Uh, and this was a point that he hammered that it's not anything to do with superposition, yes. that it's precisely, uh, or with the lattice theoretic relationships, all that orthomodular or orthologic stuff just drops out of a much more fundamental approach, which is which has found the correct adjoint. <coughs> the, 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 one way of looking at it is what is linearity? Yeah. Like if, if, so yesterday was a bit of a discussion, linear, non-linear. But just making a sentence in which you put the word linearity, like even saying non-linear, assumes such an amazing amount of structure which you might not really want to carry around all the time. So you want to. So it's a, partly what I'm going to do is also about unraveling what linearity actually is about. How many different things? You, and it seems that the logic that is something much more axiomatic, much more free, which gives you the behavior, the sort of linearities you want in physics without having to go to vector space structure and this enormous amount of structural things which have to, you have to carry around. So you can do things that are much more abstract, abstract but at the same time, much more operational. So I'm not going to assume anything which is sort of just carried in for sake of mathematical convenience. Okay, so again, you know, by the one, this is quantum logic. He, he, he quickly sort of said, oh, no, no, no. And then he went to see Star Wars and stuff. And what well, developed it basically. And type 2 factor. So, okay, then Dirac. So, Dirac, Dirac was really cute. Uh, he came up with this cat stuff, bra stuff, bracket stuff. And as everybody knows, it's very elegant. It has this implicit capability of getting rid of global phases if you, if you use a cat bra and you go to the, pro, to the density matrices. So, then the problem with the redundant global phases is gone because you can eliminate them. But Maybe Bessel knows this more, but as far as I can see, Dirac doesn't have a mathematical semantics for his calculus. It's just a convenient way of writing things. Yeah, I think he was more or less exploring it as he went. It's creating it as he went. As he went so that's what I mean by cute and messy, because <coughs> there is no clear semantics. You can.